I'm Robert Elliott Platchorn, and for the past 30 years have been known in federal prisons across the country as Bobby Tuna. And I have the dubious distinction of having served more time in federal prison for marijuana than anyone in America. I was a smuggler back in the 70s. I used to smuggle marijuana from Colombia to Florida. Back in the middle 70s, generally a first offender for marijuana, I'm talking about smuggling, would get three to five years, and it's very likely part of it would have been suspended, and they'd end up not spending more than a year, year and a half in prison. We thought that was the most we were facing. And we were the first case in America to be prosecuted under the kingpin laws, which was never meant to be used in marijuana prosecutions. But they gave me 64 years, and with good time and other time, I ended up uh, going home in just 30 short years. I was smuggling marijuana for about two and a half to three years. And we brought it in in quantities from 400 to 800 pounds in small planes and up to 30,000 pounds in yachts and sports fishermen. Usually we'd use two sports fishermen to bring in a 30,000 pound load. In total, the government alleged we did a million to three million pounds. But in fact, it was nowhere near a quarter of a million pounds. Back in those days, we used to pay 50 or $60 a pound for real good Primo in Colombia. And when we sold it in the United States, we would get about 280 a pound. When it hit the streets, it was probably worth double that, but no more. When we were indicted, uh, we had been retired for about a year already. Like any other business, when you first start, you lose more money than you make. And we actually lost money on the first couple of smuggles because we had to borrow money to put it together and we lost airplanes. And, uh, it was our third try by the time we actually got into profit. And when we had netted a million each and paid all the crews and the drivers and the warehouse men and the Colombians, and we wrapped it all up. And it was a year later we got indicted. Although it was alleged we were the biggest there ever was and that we had brought in up to 300 million pounds, the truth is that in probably eight attempts, that includes little airplanes and a big airplane and middle-sized boats and a big boat, that it was well under a quarter of a million pounds. There are people in prison today who were arrested several years after I was who are not getting out. They're actually serving life sentences for marijuana. And so I'll lose my title, but that's okay. Listen, in the 70s, we all thought it was going to be legalized. It was no big deal. I can remember smoking with judges and lawyers and doctors. And for the first two years I was in prison, I had a tremendous resentment. I was very withdrawn and then at some point, you realize that it doesn't serve a purpose. And through the rest of those years, I was very fortunate. I stayed close with my family, grew up with my son over the telephone. I divorced my wife so that she could have a life. And we had been sweethearts. We met at 16. But I wanted her to have a life because I knew I might not survived that many years to get out. But when I did get out, I was the luckiest guy in the world. Of course, there was my wife waiting for me, and we've since remarried. My son was 30 years old, 34 years old, and he was four when I went away. Uh, as you've seen for yourself, we're very close. You've seen him out at uh, my booth, I'm signing my book, The Black Tuna Diaries. I'm signing it here at the uh, normal convention. Read an excerpt from the book. It's smuggling stories, it's prison stories. Uh, probably most of the prison stories that aren't really scary are funny. 
I haven't written any dark stories, no depressing stories, and I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me because I came out and I had family, I had friends, I had my son, I had a beautiful granddaughter, and now I got another one, and uh, I'm doing the things I love. I'm back in the pitch business, making infomercials, and you know, I did one of the first uh, Popeil Dilematic commercials, and I did the old Ginzu knife commercial. You cut chicken and ham, you carve turkey and lamb, you cut a cow in half with this knife lady, and that's no bull. I'm not just a smuggler turned writer, I wrote for television years and years before I uh, was a smuggler. And since I've been out, I've been doing volunteer work to get medical marijuana on the ballot in Florida for PUFM, PU, uh, People United for Medical Marijuana. To come here and walk outside the hotel and see 15 or 20 people medicating openly in the sunshine and enjoying one another's company while they do it is the most wonderful thing, but it absolutely blew my mind. For someone who spent so much time in prison, to see people openly smoking, uh, and to have them say the nice things they've said to me for being a pioneer and, and a volunteer in the cause for so long. It's just been fabulous.